Steven Spielberg's Animaniacs was an early 90s cartoon that was made for children, but like a lot of 90s cartoons, had quite a few adult jokes and innuendos intertwined. Animaniacs is set to return as a streaming show on Hulu. Let's revisit some fun facts that led to the show's success and ultimate demise. Number one, Tiny Toons paved the way for the Animaniacs. The Tiny Toons Adventures premiered on September 14th, 1990, and would have a successful three-season run. The success of Tiny Toons led Spielberg to believe that a new series based on a similar format needed to be created, and Animaniacs was born. Number two, the Warner Brothers and Sister Dot were almost foul. The three main characters we've come to know and love were almost ducks. Thankfully, the duck market was pretty played out by Disney with Donald Duck, DuckTales, Darkwing Duck, and even Warner's own Daffy Duck and Plucky Duck. So the characters were modeled after old 1920s cartoons where Walt Disney's Oswald the Rabbit, predecessor of Mickey Mouse, became an influence. Number three, Disney loomed large over the Warners. As a display of what was to come, a large blow-up of Yakko was added to the Warner Brothers water tower, and Bob Daly, head of Warner Brothers, saw the giant balloon and ordered it taken down, thinking it was a malformed Mickey Mouse. Daly also necessitated the physical change to the characters, drawing in the side whiskers they are known for. Number four, oh brother, where art thou? The Warner Brothers and Sister Dot began life as a slightly different threesome, at least before changes were made in the design process. The original crew was named Yaki, Smacky, and Wacky. Yaki, the chatty one, pretty much remained the same except given pants and renamed to Yakko. Smacky and Wacky were merged into Wacko, most notably keeping the red hat from Smacky and the hanging tongue from Wacky. Dot was added into the mix to round out the threesome. Number five, the Warners are Tom Ruger's kids. Animaniacs creator Tom Ruger didn't have far to find inspiration for the basis of the Warners. The original trio, Yaki, Smacky, and Wacky's personalities were based off his three sons, Nate, Luke, and Cody. What did Cody think of his character's change to Dot? According to an interview with Ruger in 1995, he wasn't happy about it at first, but now he loves Dot. Number six, the studio's interference backfired. The studio never quite understood the concept and wanted the team to turn it into more of a sitcom. So the writers mostly acquiesced by making fun of every sitcom trope, turning the studio's mandate into a joke. Number seven, several characters didn't make the cut. According to the Animaniacs Bible, there were several characters that were created for the show's supporting cast, but never made it past Spielberg, who had the ultimate say in which characters moved forward and which were left for the cutting room floor. Characters like Bossy Beaver and Doyle were too much like Pinky and the Brain. Others like Clyde and Egghead Jr., the Fleas, and more were left off for reasons unknown. Number eight, the spawn of Spielberg were saviors to one duo. Mindy and Buttons were one duo that was left out of the mix, until Spielberg's kids saved them from the great unknown. They apparently liked the drawings of Mindy and Buttons so much that Spielberg reversed course and had them included in the cast. Number nine, sex sells, unless it's a kid-friendly show. Unfortunately, one character who made it through the character development process, Minerva Mink, would only show up in a few episodes due to her developments being a bit too hot for cartoon TV. Despite being redrawn with less cleavage, it was eventually determined that Minerva's character was just too suggestive and ultimately she was forgotten for the rest of the Animaniacs run. Number 10, Hello Nurse. Despite Minerva's character being too racy for the show, Hello Nurse, the only name she's known by, was never far away as she is in several of the episode sketches throughout its run. Often an aide to Dr. Scratch and Sniff, she's also used as an actor in several other sketches when the need arises. In Wacko's Wish, we find out that not only is she pleasant on the eyes, she has a high IQ topping 192. Number 11, Borrowed Catchphrase. One cartoon's trash might just become another's treasure. Hello Nurse might have become synonymous with the Warner Brothers and Sister Dot, but it was originally meant for Tiny Toons Adventures Buster Bunny as a What's Up Doc type catchphrase. According to Ruger, it never quite worked coming out of Buster's mouth, so it was dropped and later used in Animaniacs anytime a nice looking lady or guy would come into the picture. Number 12, pushing the boundaries a little too far. 
the writer's room would work in subtle and sometimes not so subtle adult jokes and innuendos that helped make it stand out from its cartoon rivals. Although not as out there as Ren and Stimpy, the Animaniacs certainly helped pave the way towards this type of comedy for future cartoons. The 90s cartoons certainly knew how to draw in the older crowd while still being as kid-friendly as possible. Number 13. Animation that still holds up. The boundaries of adult comedy and innuendo weren't the only things being pushed. The animation team produced the episodes with a higher cell count than what was normal for the time. More reminiscent of the golden age of animation, it made the movement more fluid and still holds up today better than most animated pieces from the 90s. Number 14. Music to the ears, but not the budget. Spielberg insisted that every episode have an original score which led to a high quality of sound for the show, but also allowed for the ballooning of the budget with a 35-piece orchestra. The writers and musicians worked in total harmony. The musicians couldn't wait to laugh at the jokes in each episode, and the writers couldn't wait to hear the new score. Number 15. The World Nearly Missed Out Yakko's World, Wacko's America, and most of the iconic songs from the Animaniacs almost never happened, at least in the way we know them. Randy Rogel, the genius behind many of the catchiest songs on the show, was working on Batman the Animated Series and was passed over originally. It was his son's geography lesson that led him to the creation of the World Song, which he promptly sent to the Animaniacs team and got him noticed. Thanks to that moment, we all passed our states and capitals tests in school. Number 16. One Take that's all it took for Rob Paulson, voice of Yakko, to nail the Yakko's world song. Number 17. Rock Sugar Because Pop Rocks If you thought Jess Harnell did a great job singing as Wacko in the voice of Ringo, he continued on creating the band Rock Sugar, a band that mashes up several rock and pop songs from the 80s. Jess's unique set of vocals often mimic the lead singers of the bands, which is apparent in his stint singing Don't Stop the Sandman, which mashes Journey's Don't Stop Believin' and Metallica's Enter Sandman. Number 18, Filling the Time Void. When a show has a strict 22 minute length, what happens when you realize all the sketches are a minute or so short? You can pad the sketches which make for awkward moments, or you create a new sketch called The Wheel of Morality. This is one of the more memorable pieces of the show, generally happening towards the end of some episodes, and was only added to pad the runtime so they could hit their 22 minute length. Number 19, Fox vs. WB. When Animaniacs originally aired, it was on Fox Kids, but the WB had other plans for the show as it tried to push their new WB Kids channel that led to the downfall of the show. Number 20, The Demise. Ultimately, the higher cost of animation in the 35-piece orchestra caused the budget to be higher than your typical animated show. Adding the move from Fox Kids to WB Kids helped kill the show after five seasons. Another piece was the show's humor itself. It pulled in so many older people that the demos didn't match up well for the studio. Animaniacs would leave the airwaves on November 14, 1998, with 99 episodes and one straight-to-video movie and Wacko's Wish. Although the show stopped producing new episodes, the show lived on in syndication through reruns over the years. Winning a Peabody Award, two Daytime Emmy Awards, and more, it is considered a successful run that has lasted over 20 years and will be pulled out of retirement for the upcoming run of two new seasons on Hulu. 